Welcome to Driven, brought to you by Petronas Premax, a whole new web series that will show you the best cars you should buy. Now, if you have 80 to 90,000 ringgit to spend, the Toyota Vios would be the most obvious choice. It has the brand image, it has the newfound aggressive looks. Now, it does seem to be the most popular option here. But being popular doesn't mean it's the best choice. Take a look around and there are a lot of other options. This is Malaysia's own Proton Suprema S. It's the biggest, fastest and the cheapest car here. If you like technology, a slightly higher sitting position and you want to save fuel, you can also have the Honda Jazz Hybrid for about the same price as the other two cars. Now the new Vios looks a lot better than the old one, both inside and outside. But if you ask me honestly, I think this body kit is not happening. Lah. Sure, you can save some cash if you buy the J or E variants, but this G hits the right spot. Well now, the Proton may not tickle you the same way, but for up to 10,000 ringgit less, it serves up the most flash for your cash. It's easily the best looking car here, isn't it? Well, the Honda Jazz Hybrid is the most affordable hybrid in Malaysia. It's all about fuel savings with this one, while giving you lots of space at the same time. So your fuel bills, and the fact that you paid no taxes when you bought this car will make your friends green with envy. I'll show you what will make others jealous. The Proton has auto lights and wipers and comes standard with 6 airbags and ESP. So there's no doubt that it's the safest car of the lot. It's not without faults though. The so-called keyless system isn't really keyless. There's a push start button but it requires the key to be inserted first. Then there's the slow Android based touchscreen unit. Good ideas, but badly executed. In comparison, the Vios is pretty basic. It's got a smart keyless entry system, but there's nothing much to talk about other than that. The touchscreen unit is a cost option, and there's no auto aircon, only two airbags, and no stability control either, which is kind of unacceptable at this price range. A lot of cheaper cars have it, so why can't the Vios? That's a real shame. The Jazz has the important ESP safety net, but just two airbags. In other aspects though, it feels even more bare bones than the Vios. Forget keyless, this one's got a normal insert and twist key. It's also the only one here with fabric seats. And remember, this is the most expensive car in this group. Now let's talk about practicality. The Suprema S is one size larger than the other two cars. So it is not surprising to find out that the cabin is roomier than the other two. However, when the rear seats are up, the boot space is no larger than the Honda Jazz. Space and practicality is never an issue with this Honda Jazz. It's very well packaged, so it's small on the outside, but big on the inside. And the great ultra seats in the back might as well be called magic seats. Now the big boot is the name of the game for the Vios. You can put a lot of stuff in there, although the two hatchbacks will probably give you a taller interior space. It also has the most supportive and comfortable seats. Okay guys, now we have checked out the cars. Let's drive them. Jump. Let's go. I'm behind the wheel of the uh, Honda Jazz Hybrid and I must admit that I'm impressed with the low-end torque thanks to the electric motors. And uh, in terms of the handling, it feels just about right. It's overall quite balanced, if you ask me. Driving dynamics is obviously not the Toyota strongest suit. There's nothing much to report in here, just that it's very comfortable. As expected, it's the slowest of the three cars that we have here, with an equally weak handling to match. Vios owners may disagree on this, but this is not a sports car. Even then, the old 4-speed automatic gearbox is very smooth, and it's still the most natural feeling next to the two CVT equipped cars here. Proton's claims of Lotus ride and handling in this car is no empty promise. It handles quite well, but yet rides comfortably at the same time. So it's a pretty good balance. 
The car's Achilles heel, however, is the gearbox. Despite the powerful turbocharged engine, the gearbox is kind of a letdown because it vibrates too much and is quite noisy. This car would be significantly better if they had a better gearbox in it, like even the 4-speed from the Toyota Vios would do. I'm now behind the wheel of the Toyota Vios, and I must agree with Huffrich on this, it has set its focus on comfort and little else. Plus, it's really quiet in here. There's a distinct premium feel in this car, more than the other two. Everything looks and feels premium, right down to the stitching across the dashboard. I'm really, really impressed by that. Now, despite being fake and made out of hard plastics, they look classy. As Paul said, this car has a very good ride and handling. It strikes a perfect balance between comfort and body control, so both the driver and passengers can enjoy the ride. I'm not a big fan of the transmission though. It's noisy and whiny. If I like those two things, I'd be married. As you would expect from a Proton, build quality is not very good. The top layer is decent enough, but the rest of it is poor. In fact, the only two things that are soft to the touch are the seats and my belly. And the seats are not even that soft. You don't have to go full-blown German with dashboard design and quality. What Honda has put in this Jazz Hybrid, although it looks a bit complicated, but the fit and finish is perfect. And there's a lot of convenient little cubby holes here and there, which is more than what Proton has done for the Proton Suprema S. I prefer comfortable suspensions rather than stiff ones in cars of this segment. The Jazz fits the bill there. However, Honda could improve on the wind noise and the tyre noise in this car. We also managed to do a fuel efficiency test on all three cars with Petronas Premax, which gives you consistent quality. Based on a mixture of city traffic and highways, the Jazz Hybrid proves its worth with the best average fuel consumption of 20.2 km per litre. The Vios manages a decent 17.3 km per litre, while the faster and heavier Suprema tails the lot with 13.9 km per litre. Okay, now that we have driven all the cars, who should be the winner? In last place is the Honda Jazz Hybrid. Not that it's a bad car, but in this company, it feels too plain. We've also discovered that it's not that much more economical than the other cars. The second place car is a car that drives very well and has lots of equipment too. But unfortunately, that's the only thing good about the car. It still lacks build quality and refinement. The car I'm talking about is the Proton Suprema S. So surprise, surprise, our winner is the all-new Toyota Vios. Simply because it is the best all-rounder. It is comfortable, it looks good, and despite its old drivetrain, it is still economical. But, we still have one more test for all three cars to go through. We call it the image test. It's often said that your car says a lot about you. It's an extension of your own personality and lifestyle, so naturally you'd buy one that suits you the most. So, let's see what regular Malaysians think a typical Vios, Suprema or Jazz hybrid owner will look like. Well, after collecting all the responses, we've come to an alarming conclusion that Malaysians think a typical Proton Suprema S driver looks like this. A Toyota Vios driver most likely looks like this. And as for the Honda Jazz Hybrid, well, if you drive one, here's what people think you look like. So there you have it, a simple yet revealing result. If you have a comment, please share at paultan.org. See you next week. Driven, powered by Petronas Premax, the fuel that truly gives you more.